My name is Bishop Dexter Johnson. I am the senior pastor of the Higher Ground Empowerment Church in the historic Vine City community here in Atlanta, Georgia. Let us pray. Compassionate God, our creator, faithful provider of all that is good. Inspire in life as we come today seeking to be made aware of your presence with us. Send now your Holy Spirit to comfort hearts in the light of your glory and grace. Grant us peace such as the world cannot give. Father, we pray today for the King and the members of the royal family. And as the world mourns the death of Her Majesty, we cannot help but to ask that the healing begin within all of our hearts that we may move forward in this life to become better people. We know that we do not always do to others as we would have them to do to us. We know how often we forget that those who humble themselves shall be made great, and those who make themselves great shall be humbled. We know we sometimes ignore the teaching to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Forgive us, dear Lord, our failures to live consistently as your people, as inhabitants of the earth and citizens of heaven. Father, assure us of your forgiveness that you offer through Jesus Christ. Help us every day to live up to the sacrifices made on behalf by those who have gone before us. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive Rodney Cook, Jr., President of the National Monument Foundation. I would like to introduce Rachel Galloway, the British Consul General. She is the senior United Kingdom official in the Southeastern United States. Ambassador Galloway, welcome to Georgia and welcome to the Prince of Wales' monument. Thank you. It's my great honor to be here with you as His Majesty's senior representative to the Southeastern United States. Her late Majesty the Queen was a global monarch for millions around the world. As we have just seen, the diverse representation of guests at the funeral reflects this. From countries in the Pacific Islands, 9,000 miles away, to Chile, the southernmost point in South America, heads of governments, royals, and ambassadors from around the globe have come together to pay their final respects. We've been deeply moved by the affection shown for the Queen from all corners of the world. The royal family have said what comfort this brought them. It's also move moving to see the thoughtful tributes offered from across this country. The Queen was a great admirer of and friend to America, and she often spoke about the common heritage and values that we share, especially on freedom and democracy. During her lifetime, she met 13 US presidents and visited a great many places across the United States. Throughout her 70-year reign, the longest that Britain has seen, the Queen embodied the British spirit of public service. She was there for the nation throughout good times and bad. We will miss her deeply. The Queen is succeeded by her son, His Majesty King Charles. It is fitting, therefore, that we are gathered here this morning at the World Athletes Monument, as this was a gift from His Majesty, then Prince of Wales, and dedicated to the 1996 Summer Olympics here in Atlanta. In 1977, His Majesty spoke at the Georgia General Assembly during a visit to Atlanta and attended an all-important UGA football game. Being here this morning at this monument is a reminder of the royal connections to this wonderful city and state. I would like to thank the National Monuments Foundation, Midtown Business Alliance and Fulton County for organising this morning's proceedings. This gesture and the many tributes left at this monument show the deep affection that Atlantans and Georgians have for our royal family. Thank you so much. God save the King.
This building was given to the people of Georgia by King Charles III in 1996, as the Consul General just told us, for the Centennial Olympic Games, among one of the world's most celebrated peace events. The Olympics Monument is managed by the National Monuments Foundation team, Max Schmidt, Dan Perez, Mike Russell, and Chris O'Brien, and the Midtown Alliance, headed by Kevin Green and his team, Marcus Neville, Milton Jones, Daniel Eistuck, and Brian Schiffbauer, who we thank for preparing the grounds and the building for us today. Fulton County is the official owner of the building. In that capacity, I would like to introduce the Fulton County Commission Chairman, the Honorable Rob Pitts. All right, good morning, Madam Consul General, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's really fitting and proper that we're on this site today, as has been referenced, and in front of this monument for what it means to our city, our county, and the state of Georgia. Good morning again, and thank you for taking part in this historic ceremony that I am very and deeply honored to be a part of. The death of Queen Elizabeth II marks the end of an era in our world's history. Like millions everywhere, and even this morning, we've all been glued to our television sets, watching as crowds lined up to pay their respects. It has been awe-inspiring. Clearly, she was loved and respected worldwide. Now, some of you may not remember, but I do. But before the 1996 Olympics here in Atlanta, the British consulate considered inviting her, the queen, to visit and honor the athletes. But we knew that that was probably not going to happen. But it was a wonderful ceremony at Oglethorpe University that many will never forget and I will never forget. And in fact, what made that so special was that an, an Atlanta um, resident of Buckhead, Miss Salvage, a look-alike, was there to make that a very special occasion. She also mourns with all of us today. The Queen traveled to several U.S. cities and visited dozens of cities, but sadly though, she never made it to Atlanta. But what a wonderful event it would have been had she been able to grace us in Atlanta and Fulton County and the state of Georgia. Today, though, we gather together to honor the Queen's legacy. During her 70-year reign, she faced many challenges, wars, political turmoil, family problems. But throughout it all, she remained a class act. Most agree, including her critics, that she handled those challenges with grace and dignity and skill. Every one of us here today and listening and watching can learn from that grace and dignity and try to work together as one despite our differences and our challenges. As I close my brief remarks, I'd like to share one of the Queen's most famous quotes Grief is the price we pay for love. And so today, we do grieve. And that is because we truly loved Queen Elizabeth, each in our own way. And we're thankful for her contributions to the world. And to King Charles, all the best to him in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. And may he be as successful as his beloved mom. Thank you. Consul General Galloway, Bishop Johnson, Commissioner Pitts, Judge Portis, ladies and gentlemen, we gather today to mourn a lady for the ages, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Even the young people gathered here today will be able to tell their children and grandchildren that they were privileged to have lived at the same time as this great lady. It may not be apparent to many, but the death of a figure whose very passing stops the world 
for reflection and pathos, if only for 10 days, is an extraordinary thing. Human beings yearn for basic goodness, humility, decency, honesty, and in this extraordinary case, majesty, yet a monarch who could fix a broken down truck motor. Her example to her kingdom and the world was always Judy, hard work, and the love of her people. And she never stopped having a working session advising the new Prime Minister Liz Truss at her beloved Balmoral two days before she died. She deftly guided an empire to a commonwealth with grace, dignity, and a bit of wry humor, for which she was very famous. And do not let those who attempt to tear down and criticize win in this case. Elizabeth II is a heroine of our time, a person of many virtues who should be admired and emulated. As time passes and her extraordinary legacy is studied, she will likely rise to the status of few leaders or monarchs, Elizabeth the Great. And she gives us King Charles III, the most visionary and prepared king in all of British history a conservationist and urban planner long before it was cool. He has been hard working for these decades leading up to this new duty. He even gave the people of Georgia the great monument that rises behind me and was hands-on overseeing its design at his Institute of Architecture. We stand here on British soil. His UK architecture team designed the Millennium Gate and he suggested to Mayor Reed that Cook Peace Park and Vine City be rebuilt. It opened last year. Had the city been wise enough to approve his Prince's Foundation plan at Fort McPherson, we would have a fourth major work influenced by King Charles III. All this for us and we are not even British. He will be one of the greatest kings England and the world has ever seen and how could he not be having such an astonishing example to follow? In this day and time when we are fractured, angry, unable to just be polite to those who disagree with us, I read the words of Elizabeth the Great, who rose above politics, above confrontation, the loving, dutiful glue, always holding her nation together, calming her nation and us all at the peak of the COVID pandemic. I quote her, today, once again, many will feel a sense of separation from their loved ones. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavor using the great advances of science and our instinctive compassion to heal. We will succeed and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may not, while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. I repeat His Majesty quoting Shakespeare in his address to his nation and to his mother, may flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. God save the king. Judge Portis, please close us. Good morning, I am Chris Portis, the chief judge for the Municipal Court of Atlanta. As we gathered here for this solemn celebration of life this morning, we are reminded of the admiration that so many had for Her Majesty the Queen. We stand in solidarity and vigil with His Majesty the King, the royal family, and all of England as we mourn the passing of one of time's most beautiful spirits. We are reminded of the long-standing partnership of His Majesty King Charles III by standing here this morning before this monument, a gift given to this city in celebration of the 1996 Olympic Games. We bear witness to the example set by the Queen displayed through the generosity of this gift. 
We thank all of those who joined us this morning to join in this tribute. We are once again reminded that all that is living will return to the earth. Yet the lives and legacies of those who lived by example will continue to inspire through time and perpetuity. Her Majesty, the Queen's legacy, will live on forever. We do pray that this beautiful yet solemn celebration today begins to assuage the grief experienced by so many due to the loss of their queen. We pray that the outpouring of love by so many around the world, including here this morning, offer support and solidarity. And we look forward to the promise of tomorrow as England and the world prepare to embark upon a new chapter. Thank you all for joining us here this morning. We wish that all go forth and be well. Thank you and may God bless.